morning guys it is friday the 16th and i am up in sacramento yet again um i just got a dental appointment i did an exam and a cleaning uh, i have a cavity it really sucks um it's a really tiny cavity supposedly um, it's totally not urgent, but I made an appointment and um, hopefully I can make it, but what sucks about making an appointment here is that I have to travel all the way up here. So I made an appointment all the way uh, into like November to get that filled. And one thing they told me too is that um, in a few years, I guess I need to get my amalgam fillings replaced, which is crazy to me. Like, I didn't know they did that. Um, I didn't know regular dentists did that. I thought only like specialists or something did that, but they told me so nonchalantly like, oh yeah, in like three to five years, you're gonna, you should probably get your amalgam fillings replaced. And I was like, oh, okay, that's nice. Because um, there's like mercury toxicity in amalgam fillings and um, it once they're set, it's, it's pretty much set. Um, it's not really a, a huge problem um, for most people, I think. But when you remove them, um, I guess you kind of run the risk of releasing that toxicity into your bloodstream, which is kind of scary, so. I don't know I'm kind of like freaked out about that a little bit but I mean if he knows what he's doing I just got my teeth cleaned and my dental hygienist was so great um, he's super knowledgeable and I honestly I love um, going to the dental hygienist because I love talking to them about teeth and diet and things like that because they're always super um, happy to talk to me about it and this guy he was like um, talking to me about fluoride and stuff and um, flossing he taught me how to um, better floss like my method of holding the floss and everything and I was like wow that's so much easier than what I was doing so look up how to floss it's and how you hold the floss in between your fingers and use your middle finger to like um, push the floss in it's so much easier when you hold it right um but anyways and then he was talking about how fluoride is like it's a lot of people think fluoride is really good for you um and that can probably be the case in some cases um but it's also not good for you in the amounts that we get it um so he was talking about that and I don't use fluoride um, purposely. I don't drink, I purposely don't drink water with fluoride in it. Like I avoid water with fluoride in it and all the other chemicals. I try to get fresh spring water from a local source um, and you know, glass, glass water bottles and everything, uh, glass jug and um, I also use earth paste for my toothpaste so I don't use you know toothpaste with added fluoride or anything like that um, because I don't want it in my system and he was saying um, he put fluoride on my teeth so it's like direct to the source it's not in my system um, and and even if it is I don't drink it I don't put it you know it's not in my toothpaste so it's not like you know overloaded but a lot of people they we grew up at least in my generation we grew up uh, being forcibly fed fluoride in capsule form and it was put in the water in many states and many uh, many cities not all cities but um, I remember in third grade I was forced to take a fluoride uh, chewable and then brush my teeth afterwards with no water no toothpaste and I'm pretty sure that toothbrush was disgusting but uh, yeah I mean and then he was saying that before you're about 20 
it's good because your your teeth haven't like completely hardened he said so before 20 i guess putting fluoride in your system is good but then after 20 it stops being as beneficial so i thought that was interesting anyways um i have to go drive back home and then i'm going to go to my old elementary school and speak to some fourth graders about um this genius hour thing so i'm gonna go to my first speaking event i guess you could say which is really exciting i'm super excited about it um i've never spoken before i've never been asked to speak in front of people before so this is like an exciting moment for me even though it's just in front of some fourth graders and they're super, probably super easy to talk to but um, I'm still excited for it so hopefully that'll be super fun um, I still have an hour left before I do that so uh, let's go so I just got done with my little speaking event for the fourth grade genius hour at my old elementary school and it was so Fun. like I definitely want to do that again um, I talked to the kids about um, research and how if you have a burning desire to know something you research it and research leads to more questions which questions which is true if you are researching something and you are satisfied with what you know then I don't know that's just not, I mean, you should continue forever. So, um, that's kind of what I talked to them about. They asked me lots of questions. And this little girl, she came up to me beforehand and she gave me this. Kira Bug, number one fan with a beautiful butterfly. And I was like, <gasps> she used my freaking online name. And I couldn't believe it. And, um... I guess she watches my videos, so if you're watching this, Ty Lin, um, thank you. That's so sweet, and I wanted to cry. And so many little girls and little boys hugged me on the way out, and it was so adorable. And um, they all asked great questions. Wow, they had so many questions, and there just wasn't enough time to ask them all or answer them all. Um, or talk there was just not enough time I could talk to them all day and a little girl also came up to me and she was like are you Native American and I was like yes I am give me a hug <laughs> it was so cute um, I think she was she must have been Native American too but there's just not enough time to talk to these kids there's so many of them and they just came and went and um, I, I could I could have done that for hours, but it was really fun, and I'm so happy I did that, and I hope to do that again. It's noon now, and I have to write my maid of honor speech for my sister's wedding, which I have not done, and the wedding's tomorrow, and oh, I'm going to rip my head off. Um, so I'm going to go do that and drink coffee because I need more coffee because I woke up really early this morning and I'm not used to that. I don't think I got enough sleep. So I'm going to get more coffee and then write my speech and then go to rehearsal dinner. And wow, time is flying by. So I just made it to Barnes & Noble. I'm going to go write my maid of honor speech now, but there's only one Pocus stop here. That's it. Like, are you serious? For real? So, I got two Pokeballs, but that's not too bad. I'm gonna go farm some more in a minute. I just got done writing my maid of honor speech for my sister's wedding, and I went to Chipotle for lunch because I haven't eaten anything today, and I've had way too much coffee. <laughs> um, but I, wow, I just love Sacramento. I think people here, are just they're really freaking nice and I mean yeah there's like the angry ones too but um, that's all they are they're just angry well disappointed and then that turns to anger um, which is totally normal but I feel like people here are just so relatable 
and so down to earth and it's like they have this like spark that's just like I got you you know and maybe it's just because I grew up here but I just feel like people here are super real and really nice and un like relatable and understanding and they're just cool I just think Sacramento is just cool um, like I've lived in the Bay Area I've I live in San Diego and people are nice in San Diego too don't get me wrong but like there's just like a certain like down to earth feel that I get from Sacramento people. Um, again, probably because I grew up here, but there's just there's just that connection, you know, um, that I don't have with people like the general population of San Diego, for example. It's just not the same. Um, it's just different. Um, but I just think, wow, I was just like, I went to Chipotle and the girls who worked there were just super cool. You know when you're like in people's presence and they could be strangers and you just get each other and you just kind of like have that connection where you're like, yeah, that, that's what I felt. <laughs> but um, yeah. Oh, this little kid has some crazy ass hair. I'm looking at this kid riding his little scooter with his hair all like, it looks like, um, what is it called? The weekend. <laughs> it's like the weekend hair. Um, I would show you, but that's not my kid, so I'm not gonna put them on camera. But yeah, um,. Yeah, that's all I want to say. I just noticed it today. I was like, I just felt this overwhelming sense of like belonging. Um, just being out in public. I'm like, oh, my Sacramento people, you know. It's only 3. It's only 3 p.m. I'm not used to this. I'm not used to waking up so early and having a full day by now. This is like midday for me. Ugh. So this is quite interesting. Um... I don't know where this came from, but this is just in the guest room, and there's just a random Kingdom Hearts poster here. Like, what? What? <laughs> That's not mine. Where'd it come from? It's so weird. I also found these photos of me and Dino, <laughs> and that's um, on this whiteboard thing in the guest room. We're so cute. I probably shouldn't say that about myself but come on kawaii so i'm at where my sister's getting married and i think i hear a woodpecker somewhere and there's also cows over there cows there's cows <laughs> Uh, this one? Yeah. Okay. I had yellow, right? Oh yeah, you're right. Like I'm glad we did that. It's like a cube. 
<laughs> You're just not a cute. Can you see? I kind of like see it. Like it's flat right here, flat, flat, flat. <laughs> <laughs> it's cute. Look. They turned out cute. Pretty bouquet. At least I got the pretty one. I know. You guys told me mine was too big. 